And I think uh, people keep asking me, what is it that you do? And um, I love to say that I touch the future every day because I work with children. And, uh, but the only thing that I have learned from all the years that I have been a teacher is that we have been telling a big lie to all our children. We've been telling them that they are the future, that one day they will grow up and make the world a better place. And the only thing I have learned is they are not the future. They are today, they are the now. Hi. Okay, good. So thank you for coming here and spending some time and finding out the story. So I am Kiran B. Sethi and um, come to you from India. I graduated as a designer. So I was having a great time designing restaurants and designing uh, corporate identity and looking at theme parks. And then 26 years ago, I became a mother. And when I had my son in my hands for the first time, I fell in love. I looked at my son and I looked at his eyes and he, and I remember looking at him and saying, I'm giving you a promise. And uh, the promise really is to tell you that you will be loved, that everybody will know your name and everybody will understand how wonderful you are. And then he went to school. He was all of five years old. He goes to school and I'm thinking, oh my God, everybody will love him just as much as I do. The teachers will love him and his friends will love him and everything will be fine. And then one day I went to his school and I asked his teacher, I said, tell me about my son. Tell me who, what he likes to do in the class. Tell me who his friends are. And she looked at me in this very bored expression and he said, she asked me, what is his role number? And I thought to myself, oh my God, my son doesn't even have a name. He's just become a number. Another statistic of so many children going to school in India. And I thought to myself, that's it. There's no way nobody's going to understand my son's name. So what was I supposed to do? I, many mothers would probably say that, okay, I will take him out of the school or I will complain and I'll put him into another school. And I think I keep thinking to myself, um, and, and I look at myself as a designer and say, maybe I learned that when you have no choice, then the choice is you. So I took him out of school that day. And remember my husband saying, my God, what's, what's going to happen? Where will he study? I said, I will start a school. And I remember starting a school in my house, thinking, OK, every child will be able to say, I can. Every child will have a story. Every child will have a name. So 16 years ago, um, on a very fine um, summer morning, I opened up my house and I started my school in my house with 25 children. And that's it. And, 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 I, think, and I think to myself that 20, 16 years ago, I still remember every child's name. Every child has a story. And slowly over time, the Riverside School grew um, into a school that was known to build an I can superpower in every child. And I think that's what I've learned. Most children, when they're young, they start learning how to say, I can't. They go to school and the school says, mm -mm. you have been running, uh, like I keep telling uh, uh, teachers and mothers and keep saying that in the first two years of our children's life, what do they do? They are crawling, they are sitting, they are standing, they're running in the first two years. In the first two years, they tell us, look at me, mama, I'm a superhero in two years. They learn everything in the first two years when they tell you, say mama, and the child says mama. Oh, look at this crow, and they'll say, oh, this is a bird. And then when they're just telling us they're running and playing and thinking, we send them to school. And then the school tells us, oh, you can run and play? Mm, wrong, wrong, you have to sit down. You can think, sorry, that's not allowed. You have to listen to us. You have ideas, not good. You have no choice. And we don't do this for one day or one month or one year. For 15 years, we tell our children, you have no choice but to listen to what we tell you. 
And then we're surprised. Oh my God, why are children not creative or empathetic or responsible? Because for 15 years, they've learned to say, I can't. I saw so Riverside School, which I started and then subsequently designed for change, was to give every child that promise, you can, and you can do that today. Not when you're 18 years old, not when you're old, not when you're strong, not when you're rich. Today, you can make the world a better place. So that's really what it is. Today, Design for Change and the Superpower is in 66 countries. And we have it right here in Spain as well. These are young superheroes who've made a golf uh, um, course in their school. Yeah, right, you made a golf course? Yes, yeah, see? Yeah, see, yes. And how old are you? Six. Six, eight, seven. seven. I know. <laughs> there we have it. I'm just looking at this energy. I'm looking at this energy. <laughs> and this energy. And it's eight, seven, eight, nine. And all of you, my God, what happened to the energy? Yeah? Anyway, by the end of this session, I'm going to get you all to dance to a nice Bollywood number. Yes? 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, yes! <laughs> no, yes, we can! <laughs> so if this was happening, I think teachers would say, my God, they should keep quiet. They should be well behaved. No, I don't think behavior is about keeping quiet. I don't think we are good children when we stay quiet. I think the idea of the voice, which all of us is gifted. I mean, just look at this. We're the only species on the planet who can think, who has an ability to be creative. Yeah, we're the only species on the planet who have empathy. And this is the unique idea of this species. But we have to grow into these. Like, uh, does anybody go to a gym and do a uh, workout? Yeah, any? Nobody works out? <laughs> huh? I, this, one, this one looks like as if I'm working. No, you're just naturally fit, okay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so just as we have to work our muscle to make it this thing, we have to work the muscle of empathy, the work the muscle of an I can superpower. And Design for Change just brings that into each, each of your hearts. I keep saying, you know, we were just born human like an earthworm or a cat. But we become humane by the choices we make. And the world we live in needs more humane citizens rather than just humans on the planet. We take up too much space otherwise. So the idea of being humane comes from the choices we make. Can I be empathetic? Can I love more? Can I share more? Can I learn more? Can I be creative more? That's, that's the gift we have to give every child. Every child has to have that promise. Not by chance that one child grows into that, by design. And can schools become the, that nurturing ground for this? Can we build an I can culture in every school that every child has this promise, that every child graduates as a citizen of the world so that we are stopping, you know, that, so we don't have to repair the world anymore. Look at the world we're living in. Everything has to be repaired. Oh, we have garbage, oh, we have child abuse, we have poverty, we have global warming. My God, what kind of a world have we left? So what if we in education or y'all as citizens of the world believe that you don't have to now repair the world? So this I can superpower that we put seeds into the mind becomes that promise so that all of these children believe that they can make the world a better place today. But we're so tight in our heart when we want to smile and tell somebody you're wonderful. We keep thinking if you say you're wonderful, we are not that good. So let's, let's be critical. So I think those are those little lessons I have learned. Just to look at a children in the eye. I remember when I was 17 years old and I went to my design college for the first time. For the first time, I felt what it meant to be alive. My teacher looked at me in the eye and listened to me. I'd never experienced that. I'd never experienced what it meant to be listened to. Not like, oh, you're a child and I'm listening to you, but, oh. I, I think that's wonderful. Oh, that's a great idea. And I thought to myself, I, I, am I somebody? Am I important? Did something happen? And I thought to myself, oh my God, that's what it feels. 
that contagion, the idea that you are human, that you're listened, that you're valued, that you have a face and eyes and story. And I thought to myself, my God, at 17, I experienced that. So when I started the school, I said, at seven, every child has to experience that magic of being listened to. Teachers love talking. Oh, I know you better. You should do this. You should do this. But the idea of listening, and I think Design for Change brings that gift to a child. I'm listening to you. What is it that bothers you? How can I help you? How can you change the world? And I would like to believe you. And then the idea of I can gives a contagion of you can. The idea of, of sharing. Again, we don't do sharing in schools at all. I remember, at least in the country I come from, people write and put their hand in front. Have you noticed that when children don't like to share? Where did they learn that? Where at six years you realize, oh my God, I should not share. They learned it from us as adults. So the idea of opening up, sharing with your body and your spirit and being easy. Really, what is all of this? Sharing, right? The body has to tell a story. You walk into a place and people should light up and smile just because you are. Right? As we grow older, our bodies become this. And we become closer. Don't talk to me. Our bodies become this. Our bodies become this. <laughs> right? And our eyes look down. And we close in. So the idea to open up your heart, to open up your, your mind, to open up your thing. And meet the world every day with a big, yes, I can. Uh, that's... No? Yes. <laughs> OK. So I think I have shared a little too much. I'd love to ask you if you have any question for me. And then I will do a dynamic with all of you. And then we will, of course, dance a good Bollywood number. Yeah? Absolutely. I can't come from India and not make you dance. Oh, yes, yes, yes. OK, so any questions for me at this point? Hello, Kiran. Very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure, a real pleasure. I'd like to start with the first question. What exactly is Design for Change? How does it work? And especially, how do you think it helps changing or even more transforming education in any country and any system? Design for change is, call it a recipe, call it a formula or a framework, but there are four simple steps in design for change. Feel, imagine, do, and share. We call it FIDS for kids. So if anybody has a word, it's FIDS for kids, okay? And each step equals, it's like a formula, like, you know, A plus B equals whatever you would do a formula. It's F-I-D-S equals I can. So when children go through and you put the seeds of feel, imagine, do, share, we have seen, and, and across the world today, because now we're in 60 countries, we have seen children sit taller, be able to believe more, because they chose what bothered them. That means that's the first step, feel. We ask children, what bothers you? What is it that troubles you? So we listen. That's the first act of respect you give to a child. Imagine. We work with children to say, what is the change success story? What is the best case scenario? Do, now put it into action. And the fourth step, ah, for me it's the best step, it's share. Tell your story. Share your story so that somebody else can say, oh, I can do that too. Right? That's really what Feel, Imagine, Dush, and Design for Change is. And why am I telling you this and why it's so important is, Today, we have had 20,000 stories of change from across the world. And we're now seeing trends. We're seeing a pattern. Do you know what bothers children the most across the world? Bullying. Our children are scared. They're scared to go to the bathrooms of schools. I'll tell you the four places. Bathrooms, corridors, traffic, the transport, and playgrounds. They're telling us, each of these places, I'm scared. And we're telling them, learn quadratic equations. So we're not listening to a child. Imagine a child who's scared. 
He doesn't know when he will be picked on. He doesn't know what, if he leaves the class, what will happen in the corridor. He doesn't know that if he goes to the bathroom, which is often in the ends of school buildings, light is poor, nobody's manning that. A child doesn't know, can I go there? Nobody sits with them when they eat food. Children are scared. And we're not addressing that. So I think today, Design for Change has got so much data that if we change even the design of school buildings, at Riverside, we don't have a staff room. We don't have a principal's cabin. We just removed all those walls. We just broken down as many walls between children and the adults to say, we're not us and them. We're in this shared space together, right? So all of this, so when we hear children, when we ask you, what bothers you? They're not telling us global warming. They're telling us, nobody sits with me. My school bag is too heavy. Um, I don't have a playground. I, uh, it's too hot when I'm sitting over there. You know, they're telling us very personal stories. So as an adult, it'll be really foolish of me to tell you, no, 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 that's not important. Let's do global warming. So here we're telling them, it bothers you. It's important for us. So I think design for change's greatest offering to education, when you ask me, what is it about education that change, is I think this act of listening to the child. Oh, and in the listening to the child, magic happens. They suddenly sit tall and say, oh, you're listening to me? You're not telling me it's foolish and silly and small? And suddenly they're taller. That's what we want, right? That, that's the whole point of education. That's the promise. So that's what really what Design for Change has been able to do, which is, and then when I meet the children, oh my Lord, it doesn't matter what language they speak. It doesn't matter what uh, school they come from. It doesn't matter what geography. It doesn't matter what private school, rural school. Some of our best stories come to us from the villages of India and the mountains of Bhutan and the beaches of Brazil. Oh, outstanding stories. And then when, they, when we celebrate the children and we bring them on to, we've just had our celebration in Spain uh, uh, two days ago, our Be The Change Conference. Oh my Lord, we got children from the Amazons. We had children from Bolivia. We had children from um, uh, uh, Singapore. And on that stage, all of them are saying, I made the world a better place. They were speaking their languages, so it didn't matter. They were, they, it didn't matter whether they could understand each other. That's the thing, when a child believes, when, when, when an adult says you can, then they will. So design for change is, I think, just giving that uh, promise back, honoring that promise uh, for the child. It's too good. Rodrigo. Yo quería preguntarte que, que qué significan para ti estas dos palabras, I can. I'll tell you why I can is so important, because I learned what I can't does. Oh, I told you when my son was um, six years old and he was going to school, he learned to say I can't without even being taught how to say I can't. He was a child of 60 children in a class. He was one child in 60. The teacher didn't care about him. So if he wanted the teacher's attention, it would be a problem, right? So the teacher decided there are certain children in the class that don't matter. So children start learning the choreography of a teacher's behavior very easily. Oh, I should keep quiet, and then the teacher will not uh, scold me. Oh, I, you know, it's remarkable. Nobody teaches you, but children learn that. It's habit, it's like brushing your teeth, or it's like looking at how your father uh, wears his coat and you'll want to wear the coat the same way. They're not teaching you that. But children learn that very, very early. And I remember he would come home. He came once home and he had written an uh, essay on the cow. He hadn't even written it. The teacher wrote the essay on the cow on the board. The cow has, is an animal, cow has four legs, cow gives us milk. My son, when he came home, on that paper, big red mark. So I asked him, I said, Bita, what happened? Why did he get a big red mark? He said, Mama, I don't know. And all it was that he had written point number two as point number three. He was not even being creative. He just copied it wrong. And I remember thinking at that time, oh, I'm so frustrated with the teacher. And he saw my face, this, uh, you know, 
I couldn't get it at the teacher. I was getting it at my son. And he went, this. And I said, oh my God. Our children learn to say, I can't all the time. And as parents, we put more I can't into them. Why did you not get 10 on 10? Why did you not do this? If the teacher, a child comes and says, Mama, I got 58%. Who got more? Why you didn't get it? all the time? Where do our children go? Right? So I remember another incident, uh, and that really was the one that shook me. We had gone to get a report card. Imagine a report card for a five-year-old child. Anyway, so we we're standing in line, and I was third, and my son was holding my hand. First two parents. And the teacher, what's your name? You know, just give you a report card. So that parent got the, the second parent. She's peeping over to see what marks the first child got. Imagine, five-year-old children. So then she went, she got her paper. I don't know what it was. She turned to her son and gave him one big slap right across there. And I remember my son was holding his, my hand and he went like this. His hand shook in my hand. And I thought to myself, ah, oh, how much fear we put into our children. How much we expect, we will say we will love them only if they get good marks. We will love them only if they behave this way. We will love them if they say, thank you, please, hello, good morning. We don't love them just because they are. So that's the I can't, which I, I, I saw my, my child. And I think that's why the belief of I can is so important for me. Because in that comes empathy and ethics and excellence and elevation. It's the superpower. So that's why it's so important. OK? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Rodrigo. OK, so now this part of uh, the experience is to actually see the I can spirit in action. So I have a little dynamic that has been prepared. So I'm going to show you um, the same activity that the adults will do and the children will do, with the same rules and the same explanation. And then you will see the magic unfold. So children superheroes, are you ready? Please come on. Thank you very much. A big round of applause for us. OK, do you know these, this is the height and the size of all of these? Yeah? What is your age, uh, Ismail? How old are you? Uh, six. Oh, six. Six. OK, and who's the oldest? Mohammed, are you the oldest? How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Anybody older than twelve? No, right? So we have six, ladies and gentlemen, youngest, and twelve. OK. <laughs> now, who is willing to compete with my superheroes? Can the adults please come on stage? <laughs> Should I ask the age? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to ask you age. OK, all right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Are you sure you don't want some more in your team? Are you OK? Ready to go? OK, the rules are the same. You've got balloons. Yes, balloons. Every team has thread. And every team has cello tape. Right? Just three ingredients. If you want, you also have scissors. OK. All you have to do while the music is running, twice the music will run, is to build the biggest, tallest, freestanding, freestanding balloon tower. Easy? When was the last time you ever played with balloons? Well, it's a happy birthday to you as well. OK, are we ready? Mohammad? Yes. Captain? Should we take it away? Ladies and gentlemen, let the music play. And you all can dance and come around and see the magic that's happening. OK, your time starts now. Go. These are your balloons. OK, 
Okay, you all have to build your tower here, Mohammed. Right now, in front of you, you have two standing towers, right? Uh, what strategies was, uh, Mohammed? can you share how the strategy to do this happened? <laughs> okay. Who decided uh, the, uh, the roles uh, to do the strategy amongst your team? Together? Excellent. So did anybody fight? No. no? Uh, did, Eddie, uh, did anybody not listen? No. no. Did anybody, was ever, anybody saying, I don't want to do, I'm going home, I want mama? No. No? <laughs> what are you saying? Even Ismail? What was Ismail's, Ismail, what were you doing? Uh, blowing, blowing the most important job Ismail was doing. Right? Blowing the balloons. All right. Uh, what was your role in this uh, exercise? Pues, he inflado y he ayudado a construirlo. Okay. Did somebody, did somebody have to tell you, please go help? Eh, no, lo he decidido yo. You went by yourself? No. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You're doing things by yourself to help somebody? Who are you? Ladies and gentlemen, what was your strategy? Just trying out things and yes. uh, coming up with ideas and trying them yeah. as well. So we're talking not necessarily at the end about the quality of the end result. We're talking about ability. What I wanted to show you in a very small thing, whether it is Ismail or Muhammad or uh, uh, y'all, Ability is inherent in every human being. <laughs> Take it up. Oh, perfect. And he also has a sense of humor, so perfect. So ability, as, as adults, as teachers, we keep thinking, we look at children because of size. We don't look at children and human beings because of ability. We judge children, size, gender, and community. We never look at a child with ability. So what I wanted to do is show you same thing. Same amount of time given to both. Same tools. And not a single instruction to be given by an adult. And yet children are able to do. All you have to do is believe, support, and provide the right scaffolding. This is really what the ICANN spirit really is. So uh, I want to ask you, Mohammed, too, when you end it, what do you feel right now about uh, this, how, what would you do differently? If you had to do this again, what might you do differently? Nada, porque cada uno ha querido hacer lo que ha querido. Entonces, yo no le he negado a nadie lo que quería hacer. Now I can die and go to heaven, and I'm done. <laughs> but this is it, yeah? So when we start listening to children rather than for, oh, no, 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 do it now like this. No, 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 you must stick here. No, no, that's wrong. Now do this. We come in their way of natural growth. Mohammed, you were a fantastic leader. Thank you very much. And you had a fantastic crew, yeah? Next time, would you choose uh, Mohammed as a leader? Or will Ismail become leader for next one? Ismail, what do you say? Next one you will do, leading? Uh, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> that's too much work, I'm not interested. I want to blow the balloon, that's it. Right? So thank you very much, it was wonderful. Now we have to clean up. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Let's clear up, clear up, clear up. Clear up. <laughs>
¿Qué capacidades se potencian en los niños que hacen Design for Change y en qué crees tú que mejoran? Every step, feel, imagine, do, share has uh, very clear abilities in each step. So the first step, feel, is really about opening up empathy. The idea of observation, uh, not seeing from your eyes, but seeing from your heart. So that's the first step. In imagine, you're talking about creative thinking, you're talking about problem solving. So that's the whole point of uh, the imagine. In do, it's about action, creative agency. The idea of time management, roles and responsibilities, um, grit and resilience. And the last step, share, like I keep saying, is about storytelling. Uh, of course, now we see a lot of digital literacy because children are making YouTube videos and they're making PowerPoints and telling our stories. Um, but in each of these are also embedded the 21st century skills of communication and creativity. So we kind of really feel that these four steps include everything that a teacher or education sets out to teach. So it's like a real magic formula. <laughs> Hola, soy Lucía y soy estudiante de bachillerato. Y mi pregunta es eh, si te acuerdas de alguna historia de tu proyecto eh, que sea especial para ti. Uh, when I started Design for Change in 2009, um, it was only in India. And we had uh, sent the material to 30,000 schools in India. And two months later, right from the northeast of uh, India, there's a little state which not everybody understands or knows. It's called Nagaland. And our first story came from there. God, and I started crying. It wasn't a, it wasn't a big story or impressive story. It was just a story about um, children telling the world that they can make the world a better place. So the story was simple. Uh, in Nagaland, we have uh, a lot of um, militant uh, works, uh, militant actions. So a lot of children had become orphans. So there was a school for orphans where, uh, um, and there was another school, which was a private school. Uh, and these children used to keep passing the road and they would see these children in the orphan. And one day they realized that it was, uh, it was, it was summer and these children had fan and they had, uh, you know, air conditioning. When they were walking out, they saw, they saw that the children of the orphanage had to sit outside. There was no roof uh, because it was so hot and they couldn't sit inside because there was no fan. And uh, they decided that will be their project. So they raised money. They didn't go to their parents. They raised money by doing a little bit of a uh, activity a game. They raised money. They bought a fan for the school. Then when they started meeting these children, they realized many children were not well. So one of the children's father was a doctor in the private school. So he told his father, Papa, please come and give free medical uh, services. And that started the engagement and today it's still continuing. So I think for me, I will always remember the first story. Uh, subsequently, of course, many stories are great. Hola, Kiran. Soy Javi, estudiante de bachillerato. Sobre el proyecto que está llevando a cabo eh, de que los niños y niñas sean protagonistas de las ciudades y que, en qué consistía y si se está llevando ya a cabo en España. No, no en España. Pero, sí, fue un proyecto maravilloso. project. When my uh, students, uh, when, when we started school, I started the school in 2001. In 2007, that first batch of students was in grade seven. They must have been 12 year olds. And one day I was talking to them and I was asking them, what do you do when you go home? So they said, ah, oh, we watch TV. I said, what do you mean you watch TV? Don't you go down to play? They said, no, our parents don't let us because it's not safe. I said, what do you mean it's not safe? They said, no, we cannot play on the streets. And I remember when I was 12 and 13, I was always playing on the streets in, in India. So I thought, I said, my God, this is terrible. How can a city not tell its child that the city cares, right? Cities are meant to care for its child. So the, chi the child, when it becomes a citizen, will care for the city. So the children decided, okay, let's change this. So what did we do? The children went to the municipality, they went to the police stations, and they started speaking to the police and the commissioner saying, how can the city not care? Right, so we want to close down the busiest street for traffic and make it a place and a playground for children. So 
commissioner said, no, 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 we cannot do this. You go to a park. We said, no, we want the street. So I think what happened was that the children again becoming the heroes of their lives was something that uh, we started. It's, it was called approach, a protagonist in every child. How do you make a city child friendly? The children went back every day to speak to the police commissioner, to speak to the municipality, to speak to the institutions, to say a city has to care for its child. A city has to care for childhood. And after going repeatedly, and I think what even the police inspector and the commissioner saw with here, these children were not saying, okay, I'm giving up. Sometimes we give up too easily when we want something, right? We say, oh, I went two times and the police commissioner said, no, I don't want to do this. Oh, I want, you know, that, that feeling. Here, the children decided, no, we're not going to give up. They sat there, they met the commissioner, they told him why it was such an important idea. They got the municipality on, on, on thing. They got the best institutions, design institutions and everybody. And on 15th of August, 2007, we closed the busiest street for traffic and it became a playground for children. It was fantastic. It was a, it was a road, it was a playground for every child. The children who were doing boot parlors, children who were rack pickers, children from the schools. It was a playground and the community was meeting each other. It became a fantastic story. Since then, we celebrated 10 years this year in 2017. An approach has gone to eight other cities. It has touched the lives of two million children. Simply because the children decided to say, we're not going to say no. I think that's what it needs. It needs children to really, really want it really bad. And so that was another spirit of I can. Hola, Kiram, soy Alba, soy estudiante de segundo bachillerato y me, gusta ser, me gustaría saber, bajo tu opinión, cuáles son las mayores diferencias que encuentras en la educación de los niños y niñas en los distintos países donde se ha llevado a cabo este proyecto. It's the same crisis. I think we have a global crisis uh, where I keep saying that intellect, I mean, I have my, my friend, uh, Dr. Howard Gardner, said this beautifully. He said uh, that ministries and education are so consumed with math, science, and technology that we forget that at the end of the day, if we don't have people of good character, intellect will not save the world, it will destroy it. And I think that's at the core of our issues. If you look at the world right now, look at any country, there's a crisis. There's, there is this huge crisis, there are wars, there is poverty, there is... Um, famine, there is floods, there is child abuse across the world. Why are we still repairing the world? Why? After so many years of educating children, why are we still repairing the world? Why are we not angry about this? We have one terror attack and everybody, every crisis happens. Oh, we must have better uh, immigration policy. We must have this. Why? Why is there no crisis for education? So many of our children are falling out. Why are we not angrier? Why do we still have to repair the world? We're not asking ourselves the question. But if we don't prepare our children to understand that they are able to heal the world and repair it, we will constantly, constantly repair. And that is not good enough. And that is not allowed. So we're not angry anymore. We're angry when there is one terror attack and we're angry when there is a flood and a famine. We're not angry that education is not preparing our children to make the world a better place. We have to get angrier. See, this is me being angry. <laughs> Hello. Kiran? Yes? My name is Nora. Y te quiero hacer una pregunta. ¿Cuál era tu sueño de pequeña? ¿Lo has cumplido ya? Oh. <laughs> no, I, when I was 10, I wanted to be the queen of the world. <laughs> I still want to be queen of the world. I don't care which country, but I want to be queen. <laughs> no, at 10, I wasn't so smart like you. I didn't know what I wanted to do or what I want to be. Because I came from an education that kept telling me I can't. I think I got a freedom 
And I realized what freedom of education was when I went into my design college, but that was when I was 17. So I was uh, lucky. So many children are not so lucky to find who they are and what moves them and why, why they're troubled every day. So at 10, at 10, I just wanted to be queen. I don't know if that's a job. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Eh, hola, mi nombre es Marta, soy estudiante de educación primaria y me gustaría preguntarte que, cuál es tu último proyecto. Why do you say last? <laughs> I mean, I would have many projects. But the project I'm currently working on is, um, is a very exciting project. Uh, it's to help any school become an I can school. Not just the I can challenge or design for change, but the exciting project is to help um, inspired young leaders to make an I can school um, where every child graduates with passion and compassion. Two degrees, passion and compassion. Yeah, so that is my current project. Yeah, I hope I don't ever have a last project. Let's, let's, yeah. Hola, Kira. Estoy muy, muy feliz de estar aquí, de poder escucharte. Y um, algo que siempre he querido saber de estas personas que nos motivan tanto es cuando sientes que no puedes, que todo se pone un poco difícil, que dice, sí se puede. Tú también, ¿qué te motiva a decir? Yo puedo. I want you to look at who you see on your side here, right? I want you to look at your smile and I want you to look at Muhammad. I want you to look at all of these children here. And I come from a country where there are 300 million children that go to school. Only 19 million make it to college. And from 19 million that make it to college around, I, I am under, uh, the latest research said that 70% don't have employable skills. The national crisis of not doing what I'm doing is far greater than, you know, um, doing even a little bit. So I think I was born possibly in the right country to be this angry and to be this uh, inspired. I'm also born, I, I also uh, live in the state where Mahatma Gandhi was born. How can I not? Whenever I'm tired, I look at his eyes. I have an uh, 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 outline of Mahatma Gandhi all over my school. So when I get tired, I have to look at him. And I have to see him in his eyes. If I put my eyes down and feel I'm tired, I'm going to not, not do what was right. So I think I learned from Gandhiji about stamina. He started the, glo the movement for freedom when he was 46 years old at a time when all of us are retiring. And he stayed with the idea for 30 years, five assassina assassination attempts and everything, and he still didn't give up. What am I complaining about? <laughs> so I think all of us need to have our lighthouses that guide us when the sea is going to be choppy. It's going to take you here and there. But if you keep your eye on the lighthouse, you'll find your way. So I think, I think also the blessings of being around fabulous people, uh, my partners, my family, my friends. So I think, yeah, you're never alone. You never do this alone anyway. So. <laughs> you were talking a lot about uh, how the Design for Change students learn abilities and all the things that they learn and how good students and how good people they become. So I wanted to ask you, do you think that once they finish school, uh, they are like uh, better citizens. And what is their development in their community compared to students that do not have design for change schools? I will give you a, a, a small taste of how I've seen it from the Riverside children who've graduated into the world. And I'll tell you a couple of stories. And one very prominent story that came was my girls who graduate. Um, and I remember, uh, sending a mail to me. She said, you know, okay, ma'am, I'm having a great time. And apparently in college, everybody has to smoke. Everybody has to drink to be cool. 
okay? And if you're not in the cool group, well, you're not really important. And she said, you know, ma'am, what I learned most uh, from uh, uh, the Riverside experience, that I can say no. Now, if you cannot give that gift to a human being about when to say no, as much as when to say yes, that's the power we need to give. Because most of the girls who graduate, most of the they feel they have to fit in, as if they're not good enough who they are. So to give the power to say no is a profound power. I'll tell you another story. Uh, one of my boys went to this very typical engineering college, very prominent engineering college. And he wrote back a mail. He said, you know, okay, man, my friends laugh at me when I say thank you to the canteen boy for picking up the, the canteen. So I'm thinking to myself, that's what it is, right? He, of course, he, he's, he's, he's done, he was the first student who got a research paper. And so academically, they're doing excellent. But they're also showing those nuances of being human and humane, like I told you. Why would anybody laugh if I say thank you to a canteen boy? Is he less than me? So when you equip people to look at other people as people, and not because of age or what role or what car they drive or whatever, that's the grounding of education. So I'm hoping that we will see a lot more stories once our children graduate from Design for Change. So. Um, Let's see. I think that will be exciting to track. And uh, regarding skills and abilities, and I mean knowledge, do you think that they are more prepared? Oh, yeah. I think the very fact that they... I'll give you a small example of what you saw in the balloon activity. There was not a single teacher telling them what the rules of the game were. They had decided it. They figured out what roles they'll play. Uh, they figured out uh, who will take which part. They, they, they assigned that there will be a certain leader suddenly when the time was going, they say, okay, 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 come on, let's get back, right? This is a classic learning DNA in every human being, right? When your whole body is involved with learning rather than just one part of it, you retain information a lot more. So what does Design for Change do? It gets their body to be involved in, in the story. So when a child comes and talks, I did this and not teacher told me to do this, the magic happens. Yeah, you've, you've reached a lot of schools with uh, Design for Change and the I Can Challenge. But you said that your current project right now is trying to create I Can schools. Now, that implies a lot of changes, huge changes. And normally, I'm a dreamer like you. So <laughs> all the time I face, I'm facing um, the typical answer of, well, but these changes are too much, and we have rules and legislations and governments. So what would your answer be to those people? How can they overcome those limitations so we can actually have that huge change? You know, I think uh, there's a distinction between improving something and transforming something. Yeah, and, uh, and, and improving and transforming, there's a big line here. And that's where it starts. Right? So I think in each of our places, there's something we know we can, we can shift. And I've seen the beautiful contagion of efficacy. Moment you feel that there's something you've tried, there's a bite-sized piece that you have tested, you know, and, and then you're wanting to do a little bit more. So the I Can School is not ground up, do the whole thing, not at all. What we're just offering are six ways in which you can enter. So we call, it's, the I Can School is not a brick and mortar idea. It's an idea of, of insights and practices. So you can pick and choose. Do you want to just work with a parent partnership in your school? Start there. Do you want to just work with professional development? You can start there. Do you want to sh start with a little piece in the curriculum? Start there. So this is not do it all. This is start where your right fit is and they get inspired. So I think we've been testing it in, in India, and I'm telling you, if anything works in India, it can work anywhere in the world. So we've been trying it in India, and we see that schools who've been schools for 25 years, of schools who are just new and starting, are taking the piece that they best see fit, and then grow into it. So I'm excited. Uh, we, we are rolling it out officially next year in March. Maybe when I come back again, I will share with you more. <laughs> okay, who amongst here is a dancer? 
Hello, I can. That means everybody should put your hands up. Who says, who, who, who likes to dance? Okay, that's maybe a better question. Okay, come here. Come to me. Come on, come on, come on. Muhammad. Now, who says, I just don't dance? Who thinks you cannot dance? Anybody? No, right? You're the dancers? Come. Okay. Very simple. Steps are very simple. The words are fantastic. The word says, you made an entry. Then when you made an entry into my heart, my heart went ding, ding, ding. Very simple. And then there are only two uh, uh, steps. One, tu ne mari entry, dil me baji ghanti. Tang, 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 tang. That's one step. And the other step is ta, ta, ta. That's it. Are we clear? Very simple. So let's do the uh, one. Everybody, come on. Tu ne mari entry or dil me baji ghanti or tang 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 tang. Okay, that's one. And the second one is. Okay. In between, do whatever you want. Yes. Can we have music? Now do anything. Come on, come on.